Good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Vince, and with us uh, today is, and we're on match day, by the way, with us today is Ian Barker, um, all the way to the right, or maybe your left, however you're viewing. And then uh, in the middle is uh, an individual that really needs no introduction. He, he's a, he's a, as an author, he, he's a journalist, uh, he's a soccer coach as well. He also serves as uh, our chairperson uh, in our advocacy groups for the LGBT community. So, um, Dan Wogue. So, thank you so much, Dan, for coming on. Appreciate your time. And we're just going to talk a little bit about your journey, talk about the article that you wrote, which for those that are watching, I got from this old book here. Um, I think it was written in like 1993 or something like that. It's all the soccer journals combined is what it, what it is. And uh, at the time, and Dan wrote an article in there. Um, I'm taking a, my master's through Ohio University. And I had to come up, you know, I'm looking at some articles and I, I reference this book a lot for the assignments. And I stumbled across yours and I'm like, I'm gonna read this. And I'm like, you know what, perfect. I, it's perfect, it goes right along with some of the themes we're trying to get out, you know, and that we coach people first, you know, and soccer comes second. And uh, so anyway, Let's just talk about you and your journey, and uh, we're going to maximize you on the screen. So thank you. Uh-oh. Can't hear you. Can you hear me, Ian? I cannot hear Dan. I think Dan might have muted his mic. So, Dan, if you can check your mic. No, you're good. Well, we seem to have lost Dan briefly, at least in terms of audio. We have a... Glorify, glor glorious picture of him in his living room, but no sound. Let's give him a second, Vince. Yep. You might have to get out of the room and come back in again. Let's try it again. Would you like me to uh, cover the dead air with uh, Dan? Yes, please. No dead, air. <laughs> no dead air. Yeah. So Dan where, where is Dan, where is Dan reaching us from today, Vince? Whereabouts in the world is he? He's in Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, he says he lives right on the water, so must be must be a nice little little place he has there. Um, so I, I put in the chat box for people that Dan was nice enough to write for us a short learning module on diversity, dealing with athletes and and um, individuals within your group that come from different backstories. It's uh, highly worth um, looking at. It's probably twenty to thirty minutes, but it was actually done by a member for members. Um, so it makes a refreshing change from having to listen to my voice talking about X's and O's because Dan was talking about things that come should come before and after the X's and O's. So yeah. I highly encourage you to check that out. You have me? Yes. You All can right. hear me? Yes. All right. Let's Sorry, do this again. All right. Let's Sorry talk about, about you. All right. So uh, I grew up uh, in Connecticut, and I – uh, played on, we had a, uh, really great, uh, youth program, one of the first in the country in, in a suburb. And I got to know the game there and really love it. Uh, played in high school and by played, I mean, I sat on the bench. Oh. Uh, however, here's my little, uh, my little caveat of our starting 11, 10 of our players went on to be a, a college captain. So sitting on the bench was, wow. was not too bad, but I, but I got to love the game. Uh, I got to appreciate it for everything, uh, everything that it is, the beauty of it, the, uh, the athleticism, the people, you know, the, the internationalism of it. Uh, and I, when I got, uh, went to college, I obviously was not good enough to play at Brown University, which was then a, top four, top six team in the country. Uh, but I kept up uh, with my writing mm. and that was sort of my entree. When I came back, back to Connecticut after college, uh, got involved in coaching, got involved with what was then the National Soccer Coaches Association. Um, and it was just a, a great ride. I continued writing. I coached, uh, got involved in the youth game, got involved in the high school game, got to travel all over the world, got to meet Pelé and Cruyff. I <laughs> uh, got to wow. take teams to, to Europe. We went 
10 or 12 times to uh, Europe. We went to Australia. We went to Brazil. Wow. Um, the, the game has been very, very good to me. Yeah, you've been a lot of places I haven't. So that's fantastic. <laughs> good for you. Yeah, good for you. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, I remember reading articles from you when I used to get Soccer America via the mail, snail mail, you know, I mean, in the article, you know, I'd, an, I'd anxiously anticipate the, you know, the issue coming. Um, and I always enjoyed reading your articles. And then speaking of articles, you, so you wrote one in this book that I referenced earlier. Uh, it's, you know, a coach's reward is its players, right? Mm -hmm. Is their players. And so can you tell us like what drove you to make, to write that and, and to me, it still has relevance today. I mean, every word you put in there. You know, the thing about soccer that I love is that it's a player's game. Uh, our jobs as coaches, you know, we can create a training session, we can create the environment, but once the whistle blows, they're on their own. Uh, we can't call timeout, we can't diagram a play, uh, we can't put in another platoon. It's up to them. Our, our job ends when the whistle blows. And I think for that reason, the game attracts a special type of player, someone who is creative, self-motivated, a problem solver, uh, someone who is in it from the beginning to the end, um, somebody certainly who is very intelligent. Uh, and, and because it's an international game, they come from all over. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's interesting in our program, uh, including our high school varsity reserves and freshmen, we have 66 players. Wow. And 33 of them, exactly half, have a parent who was born somewhere else. Huh. And it's everywhere. It's England, it's Sweden, it's Israel, Egypt, South Africa, Brazil. Wow. Uh, so, so I am able as a coach and with my colleagues who are equally, you know, out, outstanding and, and different, we create this environment and then we say, you know, guys, it's up to you. Uh, so what I love about coaching is being able to connect with these players, with these colleagues from all over the world, and then just sit back and, and let them figure it out. It's, it, I don't think there's any other sport where you can say that, you know, as, as a coach, right. It's up to them. Yeah, no, I, I, you're right. And, and, you know, like a lot of your, your, your article, you said, you know, you coach because, and then you had, you know, I love this. I love this. I love this. Right. And so the two words I love, right. And, and I think that as coaches, we forget that sometimes, right. During the season, you know what it's really all about and we for, you know forget the end at the end of the day it's about you know can we teach um life lessons using a sports strategy you know and and, and i think that's kind of what we're what we're after and um so you've obviously done this for quite a while and, and very successfully um so uh for the most part um what have you been writing recently uh, a book to uh, share, right? That'd be kind of. I, I did. It's about five or six years ago. Uh, <laughs> we kick balls. True stories from the youth soccer wars. Uh, this is one of my great goalkeepers there on the uh, cover, James Hickok. That's great. And uh, it, it's about all the things that I've been able to experience. You know, the good and the bad. Yeah. Traveling. Uh, and seeing the world through high school players' eyes, uh, coaching players who have passed away uh, through accidents and a couple through suicide, uh, being able to uh, laugh with them and cry with them and help them grow, as, as you said, Vince, through these life lessons. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking before we went live about this very tough, very sad time that we're going through. Yeah. And I'm, I'm feeling myself change as a coach, <laughs> even though I haven't been on the field with these guys. I, yeah. I know that I'm going to coach in a very, very different way. 
And we've been hanging together every Sunday with Zoom conferences. And, you know, we laugh and they put up these crazy backgrounds that are, you know, X-rated or whatever. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we talk about what we've done during the week. We, you know, I, I try to keep them motivated about training and, and, and they're doing great stuff. But it's really about the connection. Yeah. You know, every Sunday they, they want to connect. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we get back on the field, you know, I, I, I think there's going to be some PTSD. Yeah. Uh, they'll yeah. have been through some really tough times alone together. And, and I've always said to these guys, you know, the stuff that every coach says, it's, it's not about the referee, you know, the, the referee made that bad call, but what about the other 80 minutes when yeah, he yeah. screwed up? <laughs> and, but I think when we get together, you know, that'll really be true. It's not going to be about the officials. It's not going to be about the wins and the losses. It's going to be about we're out there with our buddies kicking around and, and, laughing and being together again. No, absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to volunteer at a, in a urban setting, uh, high school, uh, this fall. And I'm, you know, and so we're having our first zoom meeting, uh, coming up this Sunday. And I guess they're really excited. The boys and girls are, it's a boys and girls program. So you're right. And I think when we get out there, I mean, things, I, maybe they won't take things, uh, for granted as much, you know, and, yeah. and you know, and really appreciate human connection and value it a little bit more. And uh, no, um, you know, so you you've you have a lot of experiences and and we're so fortunate to have you uh, on United Soccer Coaches on our advocacy group uh, heading the LGBT uh, uh, group. But also you wrote this course, the online course. Can you tell us about that? Because I don't know. A lot of people realize it's out there and it's free. Sure. Uh, yeah. let, let, let me first just say that uh, it, it took me a long time uh, to come out as a gay man. Sure. And I, I was out in, in many areas of my life, but the, <laughs> the, the soccer part was, you know, a, a part yeah. that I kept separate. Uh, I was fearful of what parents and players would say and think, and I did not give them enough credit. Um, when, when I did come out, it was, you know, Hey, that's great. We know a little bit more about you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and through that, I became involved, uh, thanks, uh, to Jack Huckle, who at that point, years later was the president of what was then an NSCAA. Yeah. yeah. And he has, you know, his thing was diversity, yeah. women, college, high school. Uh, Native American, Latino coaches, black coaches. Um, and he brought me into that diversity fold for which I am ever grateful because sure. it's opened up my professional and personal worlds. So through the LGBT and allies advocacy and group yep. and the advocacy, the, the allies part is really, really important. We can't do anything without the allies. Uh, through that, about two or three years ago, we created uh, a diversity and inclusion online module. And that is now on the uh, e-learning tab of United Soccer Coaches. And, and the idea really is that you as a coach, coach all kinds of different people. Yeah. You know, you coach uh, people of different sexualities, different ethnicities, different religions or no religion, right. uh, people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. And we talk about a team and everybody's on the team, but really we're coaching very, very different people. And the idea of that course is if you look at each player as an individual with individual right. fears and, and strengths and, and, backgrounds yeah. if if you look at each of them as an individual then your team overall will be a stronger team because you're because you will create an environment 
in which all of these different individuals come together, feeling comfortable, feeling safe, feeling supportive, and boy, you'll be a really good coach. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if they want to be involved with this, they, they reach out to you via, via our website. Is that correct? Uh, sure. The advocacy uh, uh, drop down menu is yeah. a great one. And let me just say also that part of advocacy is there, there's two prongs to it. Yeah. There is who you coach, high school, college, pros, youth, uh, male, female. Uh, and it's who you are as right. a coach, yeah. uh, LGBT, Latino, uh, black, faith-based, uh, Native American. So what we have done on the Advocacy Council is try to make sure that these are not silos, that, right. that people aren't separate, but that you realize that soccer crosses these many boundaries. Right. Um, you know, you're a faith-based coach who coaches women and some of those whiz women are, you know, black and some of them are lesbian. Yeah. Um, and, and by reaching across these different groups, um, man, our, our, our sport is wonderful. No, it is. You're right. And it's, you know, and by the way, I, th I mean, I think, you know, it, it's happening in more sports now. Thank God. You know, and, and, you know, I think more people are more comfortable, you know, but we still got a long way to go. You know, we, we do, you know. We and, do, but our uh, our sport has been the forefront. Yes. United Soccer Coaches has been leading the way for advocacy, diversity, yeah. inclusion. It is looked upon by many other sports and many other organizations as a leader in, in this endeavor. Yeah, absolutely. No, totally agree. And, and you know, Lee, Lee Jarrow has done an outstanding job, outstanding, and she's the queen. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and but no, I, I, I appreciate everything you, that you shared so far with us. Ian, I think, do you have a couple of questions uh, to kind of wrap up here? Because, I, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, I'd like definitely like to give a shout out to the MLS at this point because what Dan was talking about, the work he's done, our advocacy people, United Soccer Coaches, and I'm an MLS um, season ticket holder here in Kansas, and the campaign um, towards tolerance and inclusion the MLS has put out, I think not only is is very broad based and um, very high profile for them, but it also seems to me to be very sincere. It doesn't seem like a marketing ploy. So I got a huge shout out to MLS for that. Dan, real quick, have you been um, have you been writing recently uh, articles or essays? And if so, where have you published them? Uh, I'm back writing for Soccer America magazine. I mm -hmm. started with them back in 19 whenever it was, uh, <laughs> and uh, the great Mike Watala has uh, brought me back. Um, so I'm writing again on on high school and youth issues, and uh, it's. I'm as excited as ever. Okay, so that, that leads me um, to a little plug because I read you in Soccer America all the time myself. Um, for those of you that are out there enjoying this, um, the Soccer America online content is very, very affordable, um, just a, literally a handful of dollars. And you can identify if you want youth or college or all of it. Uh, you can blank out if you don't want the classified ads. Um, they're very They're very good about allowing you to to cherry pick your content. But I would say right now, there is there is pretty much no other source which is keeping up with everything that's going on in all of the youth organizations, college, MLS, the DA, um, and Soccer America has been very supportive and very gracious in their support of United Soccer Coaches. So um, thanks for, for contributing to them, Dan, and working with Mike and Paul and um and and some of the some of the other people because it's a it's a great publication when i started off as a young coach it was print and used to look forward to getting it because it was the only thing you could get about soccer uh now with um the internet and zoom and that we you can't avoid soccer but uh, soccer america still has a place in all of our hearts yeah yeah no absolutely um well dan we, we've gone over time and we've taken too a lot you know you've been gracious to give us a few minutes extra um so just want to say thank you for everything you've done, you know, not just for our organization, but just for youth soccer in this country for many years. And it's just one of those, 
you know, pats on the back that you don't get publicly, but you know, I hope that you feel them from people that, that truly appreciate it because you are one of the true um, icons, in my opinion, when it comes to youth soccer and your journalism and the contributions you've made. It's just been fantastic. So thank you. Thank you so much. It, um, it has been my pleasure. Thank you. Um, Ian, anything to end or, or I'll, I'll, I'll shut us down. No, let's plug tomorrow. And again, Dan, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. it it's 20 really powerful and valuable minutes for us. So thank Wonderful. you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, so tomorrow we have uh, Scott Stan from Taylor University and Stephanie May, who I'm not, I think she's still kind of in, in between uh, schools right mm -hmm. now, but they took the master coach diploma. So Coach Bark will pretty much lead that conversation tomorrow. And then, uh, um, in the afternoon, we will have the wonderful uh, Ian McCallum from Bainbridge Island talking about how are we doing all this when we live on an island, literally. <laughs> so thank you all so much. And Dan, thank you. God bless. Be safe, by the way, and be healthy. You bet. Uh, all right. God bless. Thank you. Be safe, Dan. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.